but I'm trying to show Africa my stuff. I'm trying to show India my stuff. You, you know what Indian, I mean? Indian followers? Bro, I get every type of DM, bro. Would every... you ever do a, like a visit to India? Like to try the food and stuff? <laughs> Not to try the food. To summarize all this, at one point in your life, you had straight Fs. And I'm proud of it, bro. So I'm so... You did too, right? Yeah. If someone asks you and they're like, hey, I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what I'm passionate about. What would you say to them? That question stems 100% from not... What's good, y'all? Your boy Brandon back again. Another episode of the Honor Run Podcast, man. This week, we got a very special guest, man. My good friend, Christian. The recipe, the we HTV Don is in the building. <laughs> we out here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining us, bro. No, no, for sure. Chill. I love being here, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. This has been a long time coming. Um, we really should have done this a while ago, but I wanted to wait just because I wanted to take my time to also learn the game a little bit because I wanted to bring you on specifically to discuss building online communities as we know we're in 2024 man social media is the move if you're not on social media you're living in the stone age whether it's for personal use but more specifically if you're a business owner if you're a creator whatever it is you do you have to be on social media it's crucial and as somebody that knows the game uh, and someone who's been in the game for such a long time i wanted to bring you on and hopefully we can give our audience um the sauce not nah, for sure um it's like good timing because like uh, i'm just now transitioning into like the content where i'm able to just help businesses grow in general because i was targeted towards clothing brands and i was able to uh learn how to build community through that but now i can actually start like aiming the the skill of building community to like small businesses basically people that can benefit from it because uh the lack of information is really like the reason why there's a lot of people struggling that's why I make all of my content free. I don't uh, put a restriction on any of my content. You know what I mean? Because that, that's just like more so uh, the way I look at it, just trying to serve the community. You know what I mean? No, for sure. And that's something that since I met you, the very first day I met you, um, we met actually at the Golden Circle. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Golden um, Golden MFG for putting Josh, that together. Josh, Gil. Shout out to Josh for sure, Gil. Um, it's a very good... Uh, what would you call it? Like networking, uh, networking event. And that's where I met you. You were getting some footage. And actually, Noe, shout out to Noe too. Yeah, for um, sure. HDLMV. I'm actually wearing the wearing the gear right now. Not a paid promo, but hopefully soon. <laughs> I'm just playing. But shout out to Noe. Yeah, he's like, oh, do you know who that is? I'm like, nah. And him, him being in the fashion world or in the clothing brand world mm -hmm. was like, oh, that's the recipe. Like, he has all these videos and tutorials, like, on YouTube and stuff. Yeah, he didn't and even I know like, I was in Vegas. Yeah. He and I was know. like, what the fuck? And, he, and then we started chopping it up. And, like, right off the bat, I noticed something that a lot of people, when you talk to them and they're an expert in anything, they gatekeep. Mm -hmm. Like, they kind of tell you who they are. And they tell you, like, what they do. But they don't really want to tell you how to do it yourself. Yeah, they kind of want to sure. keep it for themselves. And they're like, you got to come fuck with me. Otherwise, like, I ain't yeah, telling yeah. you nothing. But right off the top, you gave me some advice. And at the time, I was a little doing a little bit more on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I kind of left that behind just because I've been super busy. But I implemented slacking. what you I'm told me. You about that. Nah, for real, <laughs> slacking. But I implemented what you told me. And then, like, right off the bat, I saw, like, a change. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, oh, shit, maybe this dude does know what he's talking about. <laughs> that's funny. <yeah. laughs> but um that's how that, that's a lot of people's reaction yeah because there's a lot of like bro uh phonies and like misconceptions and like a lot of uh people out there just kind of like like you said gatekeeping and it makes it difficult for people to trust you know what i mean but that's why like uh right now that trust you build with your audience is like priceless and it's becoming more of value as time goes on especially with like i said like all the distrust around the ones that are there that you know you don't have to worry about, like the creators you consume, those are the ones who are going to win right now. You know what I mean? And like, that's why those like creators that are gatekeeping right now, like they gatekeep because they're trying to monetize in this moment when in reality, if they could just hold off, you know, and then just, just keep serving. Like, bro, the reward is like much greater, especially like in, in, in the next like few, could even be months because the internet moves like faster than we've ever seen, you know? Facts. So there's no telling. That's why uh, you got to be ready. Like, you literally have to be ready every single, like, I'm not even playing with you, bro. You got to be, like, restart your readiness every hour on the hour because of the way the internet works. You don't know what post is going to blow up. You don't know who's going to share. So, you know, you really don't know. So, you have to literally be prepared every hour on the hour to be like, yo, this could be the hour that changes my life. You know what I mean? And I've, I've been like that for, like, the last 10 years, which is funny because, like, you have to be delusional. Because 10 years, I woke up, like, today is the day. 
it's been 10 years <laughs> you know it's what i mean day, i'm, I'm like here. i can see like the light at the end of the tunnel but like that's how i thought literally 10 years ago i'm like no nah, today's the day that like finally it pays off you know what i mean luckily it didn't happen for me that early because uh i probably wouldn't have been ready i probably would have fumbled the bag like crazy like not being able to uh, keep up with content or like just having the experience to be able to like tackle um all the obstacles that the internet throws at you you know what i mean like i've been a consumer of the internet since i was a kid like young like i was like the first generation uh because i'm a i'm a, I'm a bit old, a little bit older than you i was like the first generation Punk. where like in kindergarten they had computer class yeah like i was like the first kindergarten uh class that had computer had, class like, floppy disk and stuff yeah like it was that. like the the max Dang. with like the huge back back area <laughs> yeah you know those brown I mean? ass mags yeah, it yeah was, we had those too but it was just because i was at a poor school <laughs> <laughs> we probably no, it was, it, it was those so like i've always like been a consumer of the internet so i've always been able to like understand that like we're one click away from like reaching a lot of people you know and um i know that a lot of people are especially business owners are now starting to like wake up to the fact that that that, that is important um i just i'm blessed to be in a position where i can provide the value and guide some of those people through this as the, you know through these obstacles because it can get hard and i and i understand that because I come with a lot of skill in this uh, profession and I still see resistance a, uh, a lot of the time, especially sure. when I'm pushing, you know, so yeah. I can imagine people who don't like. And also because to... it's like a changing, it's not like stagnant. It's not like, oh, I figured it out now. Nah. It'll be good. Like you uh -uh. have to kind of relearn it every single day. And but like, there's the, the thing you can't focus on is the skill of building community. Yes. So I that, wanted to ask you about that. That like, is one thing you can specifically always count on your uh, investment and in trying to learn it is going to, mm -hmm. you know, reward you at the end. That's. Oh, but like trying to learn like the new trend or like trying to waste your time trying to find the trending sound that might get you that viral video like that is like not it and that's not sustainable you know what i mean like trying to learn those skills like let's say like you know you make content trying to go viral right like trending sound a stupid dance video whatever let's say you go viral if you hit the your audience what if you're not what if you can't sustain that because the game now is like when you get those viral videos or those like views you gotta have a spike, whole catalog for people to you gotta be to. ready to like snatch them up like in a net like people that go fishing you know yeah. like they throw the net like you have to be ready to like have a your content set up to be like a catalog for them to like be able to keep clicking for sure. keep consuming because if not you're just a moment that was like viral to them that was like their little 20 second they consumed your content you know who did that and really they kept well going. recently who the hawk to a girl she <laughs> said she made a, over a million dollars and whether we think she's talented or not which i don't think she no, is. no no i'm gonna be lucky, honest bro here's my opinion on that i went for she first went viral and first started to like come out i was a hater because i'm yeah. like what the hell like i've been working for this for 10 years yeah. she comes out of nowhere but it does truly take like a very specific person to yeah. be able to like capitalize in the moment and a lot of people have viral moments like every day like every couple seconds i'm sure there's multiple people that are going viral Thanks. but the percentage of those viral people that can actually sustain it is very rare in some way somehow she aligned herself with these situations that really like made her a real content creator and like yeah people hate on her but like people are watching people are talking about her you know and at the end of the day i'm going to respect it because yeah. like like i said it does take a special type of person to be able to sustain content in this day and age even if it's the skill of obtaining a team knowing nice. how to pick a team because it's, it's, it's probably her team yeah absolutely but yeah. a lot of people pick a bad team and end up like you know in you dead homies and shit. you know what They're i'm saying yeah you know for shit. sure that happens all the time you know and like it looks like she's on her way up and as long as she can keep learning like she don't have to know everything this morning as long as she can keep learning she can sustain it nice. you know what i mean I think uh, her team actually is the Jake Pauls. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's not so, going to just put on anybody. Yeah, he's so like, if he sees potential, it's Come on, sure you know, like... And Jake right. Paul was kind of like that, right? Because he came up on a scene super quick, him and his brother, yeah. and then he's been able to pivot and pivot and pivot and then sort of remain in the spotlight for a long time. But to that point, specifically towards business owners, what do you think are the biggest mistakes that they make when they're trying to make communities online? um they're making content with the attention of uh, making it sales funnels and immediately going into like money into their bank account when that's not like that's that's literally shooting themselves in the foot you know a lot of business on and you can you can feel it like you can watch somebody's content and you can know if they're like oh this person actually cares about me or this person is probably just like using ChatGPT at a surface level and trying to make it seem like there's somebody to to get me to make a sale 
you can feel it. Like we're still people. We have, you know, like we can feel these things when we're scrolling and stuff. So I feel like they go in with the mentality of like, yo, I'm going to make a couple videos, go viral, and then I'm going to make hella sales. When in reality, they should be like, yo, let me, how can I serve? You know, like the key word really that I've been like, um, um, holding on to and i got it from uh, myron golden are you familiar with him no. his content is like top notch with the with the information but um he he kind of showed me the concept of like serving your community when you're serving is because you're serving and you're not expecting anything in return if you can serve a community um then the byproduct is they are gonna buy whatever it is that you have because they want to either support you they want to be a part of something like if you have a clothing brand or whatever and you have a big movement that clothing that they buy is a tangible way for them to feel like i'm a part of that community it's a tangible item they're buying because not because you made a gimmicky video and they like got finessed into putting their information in their card they're like no i, I want to buy this so i can wear it so i can go outside and be like i feel some type of way like look like like that facts you know what i mean so that's really like the biggest mistake really is they just go into it and just being like, yo, I'm going to make money off this. Like if like that is, that's not, it's not sustainable because this game, you got to like be able to pump out so much content, like content to the point, bro, where like you have to like go to sleep and your dreams are filled with like notifications blowing up your phone because you're so invested into it. When I first started like going hard on TikTok um and i was getting notifications like every, like 99 you know it says 99 plus when i the first moments i experienced that bro in my sleep i would just begin notifications like i would have dreams of the notifications just boom 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 and it's because before going to sleep my whole day was consumed with me locked in going in and like you literally have to be like that locked in to enter the algorithm because there's a lot of content being uploaded every day but that doesn't mean it's saturated it means the demand for our quality content is higher because just because there's more creators or more people trying to push content doesn't mean they're taking away from anybody's play if anything it's uh making the people who make good content stand out for real and i'm Flex. with the pressure like especially with this space like you can make it as hard as you want i'm gonna adapt and i'm gonna always adapt you know what i mean but that's the mentality you gotta have to like withstand this shit because this shit is hard bro like this shit is not easy like I didn't went through every emotion a million times, like over the last 10 years trying to make it happen, you know, and I, I almost broke a few times and I can imagine how somebody would, but like, you really got to just be like numb and like delusional to the goal and let nothing phase you, you know what I mean? And like, like, that's just really the mentality you got to have, you know, for sure. That's a very big mistake that I see people think that social media is easy. And just because you get a lot of views means you're going to have turnover and means you're going to have a, a community which is the worst way to think it's because that's how it was it back used, then yeah it used to be but now like we i've seen people that have huge followings it's like celebrities can open a restaurant can open any kind of business and it fails and that's like a a-list celebrity a-list actor like elite athlete who the fuck are any of us normal people to think oh i got a little bit of a following i can open something and it'll just flourish off of my name like that's not how it works mm -mm. you need people who know what they're doing and as weird as it is it's a it's a very difficult skill social media yeah. oh yeah, and yeah it's yeah, very sure. slept on it's very of, niche yeah and a lot of people think they're like that's for kids like i can do it i'm a business owner i can do it it doesn't matter it's like no like mm -mm. To, to do it the right way takes a very specific set of skills that it takes time to learn and you actually have to be in the game. You, you can't just take anybody off the street and say like, oh, here, run my page for me. And they're mm -hmm. going to know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you see the numbers doesn't mean Well, that's why people look at, look at the rare, uh, the rare instances where a nobody gets famous. And they're like, oh, well, look at that person. I could do it too. And it's just like, you know, like you're looking at the one example of like yeah. that fucking random miracle of right. like like the hawk two girl that's a fucking miracle i don't care what nobody calls it that was a fucking miracle and there's nice. people out there like i can just blow up off of one video like bro i've seen many people blow like have like millions and millions of millions of like engagement didn't translate to no followers no money like they didn't even go watch the other posts because like you know that's why it's like important to like follow like at least when you're starting out you have to stick to a niche like I had this one homie on TikTok that um, his page was his clothing brand, 
and he one day he uh made a post where he was like throwing away his vapes and he threw it like in the river and he was like yo i'm giving up vapes and the post blew up because it inspired like other people to not vape or you know what i'm saying um and uh he went viral off that post but guess what he tanked his account he could never bring that algorithm back to where he needed it to be because he was building 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 towards that algorithm and all of a sudden he just posts like a, a video that has nothing to do with where he's trying to send his community to and completely tanks his account that's why a lot of these lifestyle influencers they fail because they're they want to just show off their life and they don't want to be a master in anything. They don't want to like, you know, they're just like, oh, today, get ready with me. And then tomorrow, like, oh, watch me cook this. When people who are making watch me cook this video are people who are in the cooking niche where every post is them cooking. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like the algorithm is confused. It's like, do you want me to go to fitness? Do you want me to go to chefs? Do you want me to go to arts and crafts? Like, and then you have these lifestyle influencers just trying to like do all these things and that uh business model and uh, social media is outdated not only that but it's like you couldn't do that in a regular job so now that you think of, now now that you mention it, it's like why would you do that on social media yeah. like i wouldn't go to a restaurant that's also a tire shop that's also a dentist that's also like something else right nah. so like why would you why would yeah it makes sense why would i follow an account that has all these things when if i want to watch cooking i'll follow a cooking account if i want to watch gym stuff i'll follow a gym account mm -hmm. why because i know every single time it's going to be consistent and more than likely it'll get better over time because someone yeah. that cooks every day is going to get better at cooking over for time. sure yeah someone yeah. that goes to the gym is going to give you better advice as the years go on yeah, versus yeah. someone that's like well i kind of do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of that mm -mm. It makes sense and then that's why like on uh, on TikTok, you know how you can see your likes your like count yeah your your like count has to be or your follower count has to be at least this is like bare minimum 10 percent of your like count so it, if you have like a hundred likes, you have to have 10 followers. That means your content is converting correctly. If you have a high like count, but your follower count is less than 10% of that, it means, yeah, you're getting engagement, but you're not converting at all. And that's the metric that you get, that you got to use. Um, and a lot of these people, there's a lot of trillions of fucking TikTok accounts where you'll see they have viral ass videos. They'll have a couple, they'll pin them. It'll be three, like 3 million, 10 million, yeah, 11 million. That. And they got like 2,000 followers, 200 followers. Like, bro, there's people that have millions and millions of likes and they have 2K, 3K. I have, I'm at 99, at the time of this recording right now, I'm at 99.8. You know how many likes I have? Like 680K. That's way more than 10%. That's probably yeah. like, I don't, I don't, I'm not good at math. I'm not about to try to do math, but that's, I know that's higher than a 10% yeah, uh, yeah. conversion rate from, how many people are seeing my content how many people are engaging with it and how many they're turning around and following me that it's a high conversion that's always a good metric to look at if your uh content is performing correctly with the niche you're trying to reach you know what i mean yeah for sure that makes sense because yeah i feel like when you have that high likes like for example you can make an account that has 10 followers and make one viral video and that shit can get a hundred thousand likes so that'll just nuke your algorithm to yeah. <laughs> you'll never get it back like no, you no, said. no for sure yeah and building community but the frustrating thing i think people deal with is it takes time and it takes discipline because you have to be very patient and it takes a very disciplined person to see everybody else making videos that have 100k 200k 500k a million and you're over here you know posting a video that might get a thousand that might get three thousand yeah five thousand on a good one but if you're very consistent you're gonna you're gonna weather the storm and you're gonna win in the end and you're gonna build a community and that's like that that vision is kind of the reason why i started the podcast mm -hmm. because i felt like if we start a podcast we're gonna have a community and then once you have a community you can really pivot to anything yeah for and, sure and people that support you if they support you doing something they'll probably support you doing anything as long as mm -hmm. it's not something crazy of course but yeah. if somebody watches your podcast they're more than likely buy merch if you go and start another business, they're, they'll more than likely support it. Mm -hmm. And and but it does it does uh, it does suck when you're seeing people you know blow up doing bullshit. But it's part of the game. But but, but it's it's part it's more of it. Rewarding. Though. Yeah. And honestly, bro, like there's people that like I see working really hard at content that really get no views. You know, and it keeps me grateful because I could be getting zero views. Facts. You know what I mean. And there's somebody really, some of those it, it, it doesn't matter how many like views you get. There's somebody that's out there that is wishing they got those views. Not for sure. You know what I mean? For sure.
Like it don't matter how, bro. I, I especially in I, Vegas taught me this, bro. It doesn't matter how. I'm, I promise you, bro. It does not matter how much money you have. It does I don't care, bro. What number amount you want to put on it? Vegas has a lifestyle to snatch that shit up, and Vegas taught me that. And that's the game with social media. Like I will never feel no type of way about how many followers I have because there's somebody out there that's probably laughing at how many followers I had. You know what I mean? Not laughing, but in a sense where like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? I always got to remain a student, bro. Like, it, it don't matter, you know? And that's why like, it's easy to like, you know, shrug that that feeling off of like, oh, everybody's blowing up. Everybody's doing this. Cause like, it's levels to this shit. There's people that are used to getting millions and millions of views. And it's a bad season in content for like, you know, like a, like a few weeks, few months. And they're used to getting millions and now they're getting 100K. And they're like, what's going on with me? Why, why do I suck? Why do I suck? It's just levels. I'm over here. You know what I mean? Like, so, and there's the people that would kill for 100K views per video that would never see that. You know what I mean? So it's just like, always got to stay a student. You know yeah, what I mean? and I think consistency too, because the more you freak out when you see small changes, the less consistent you're going to be because you're going to think, oh, I'm doing it wrong. I have to do this. I have to do that. Like social media is a very finicky game that mm -hmm. you have to kind of, you know, have tunnel vision and just move forward. Once you learn your skills, once you figure out your your routine, I'm not saying don't innovate because you always have to be a student, like you said, yeah. but more than likely, once you figure it out, like 80, maybe 90% is going to stay the same. And then 10% you kind of tweak as, and you And that know, 90% is that like hum that human emotion that yes. your consumer has that yeah. you're trying to trigger. Mm -hmm. That's going to always stay the same. That's why I was saying like, it's a waste of time trying to learn like the best hashtag strategy. Like what's the best time to post? How many times a day do I post? Like all these things at the end of the day, like a lot of people spend a lot of their research time trying to figure out those things. And it's just like, it's a waste of energy and a waste of time. Cause like, let's say you do figure out that algorithm, like that shit's going to change. Yeah. You know, like these platforms have access to the algorithm data that we don't, they know when to tweak something. They know when like, Oh, people are consuming videos that are like two minutes long this week for some reason or three minutes long so any video that has two to three minutes push time span those, let's yeah. push those like mm -hmm. so that's why it's just like it's almost like it's not impossible but like to find those moments where you can hit vi virality or get those like high engaging posts it's by being like constantly trying to reach your consumer and consistently trying to provide value to them because if it goes like this you know and you're trying to hit it you gotta like the more times you're uploading as long like and not like shitty videos like videos that are actually changing yeah, yeah. somebody's day right i don't want people to be like well i'm uploading every day is not well you know as long as you're up like trying to um pump out a lot of like videos and, and and i know it sucks people are like man i don't know how to film videos well like you gotta learn then like go on youtube and figure out how do i film honestly that's why i'm starting to make content on how to film on your iphone you know because there's a lot of places where people get discouraged in the steps like oh well i can't do this i can't do that then you got to learn like you see people that are trying to be a doctor like they don't go like oh i don't know how to sew somebody back up like they know they have to go figure out right, how exactly. to sew somebody back up you know would you say however I, I do have a question would you say that knowing how to film like the exact best way to film do you think that's something you learn at the beginning or you learn at the end because I, I i don't know if you guys remember do you guys remember casey neistat yeah, 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 yeah. Like that dude used to be like him for me. Like I used to watch mm -hmm. him every day, and I used to love his vlogs because they were so different, so creative. And one of the things that he was always used to say was the story is more important than for like sure. your, your equipment or whatever it is you use. And I feel like a lot of people get held back because they're like, "Oh, I'm looking at everybody else's videos, and they're so cinematic, and they're <clears> so this and that." But the most important thing I think is always the content is always like the information, the Bro, story that you're telling, you know, what videos are blowing up right now. Yeah. When I say blowing up, I mean like getting millions and millions and millions of views and it's the people on YouTube that are like 50 year olds plus and literally having no edits in the video, just placing their camera, hitting record, coming back, sitting down. And I'm like, I'm going to tell you guys the best advice I can give to you and everything I've learned over the last 55, 60, 70 years of my life no cuts no pauses no edits just no all the way through nothing, no transitions yeah. just talking there for 30 minutes however long their video is going and hitting stop record and uploading it that is zero editing yeah and because the <clears throat> the value is just so good imagine like you can listen to a 50 60 year old person tell you like yo let me tell you all the lessons and all the things i would have done differently 
that's value but that's priceless and that's the type of videos that are blowing up because it's just the information is so good you can't deny it they don't need all the fancy like all oh, this all oh, that like you know like i call it like the uh the hormozy warriors mm. all the motherfuckers that started to do like the it's gimmicky yeah, yeah i feel yeah. like you know when you see edits that are just like boom 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 i feel like i'm watching like a circus clown trying to distract me from what i really should be yeah, paying yeah. attention like what are you why are you trying to distract me Facts. like why are you why are you putting so many everything in my face and it, it was like those business owners that are like oh let me that's that's trending let me spend my time trying to figure out like how do i get the the edits that go like this that go like this when that was not sustainable that shit's not working anymore and so not all like that but like in in two three months you're gonna have to do that process again because there's gonna be something else you're gonna have to chase after for sure yeah like that's like shit like trends are always gonna change and back then trends used to last six months now they last five months. Now they last four months, and it's just gonna keep decreasing until there's a trend every fucking day. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. And you and you're gonna have to really be able to be like, you know, pivoting and skirting and hitting different lanes like as quick as possible. But that's why I stay on it every day. It's like, it, like the way I look at like uh my social media game is like a person that like is a bodybuilder that like he goes to the gym every day. He's gonna feel guilty if he don't go to the gym one, two, three days in a row. He's gonna be like, ah. That's me. If I don't upload for a day, I'm like, all right, it's cool, bro. You needed a break. It's cool. If I don't upload for two days, I'm like, mm, was, was that, was that, was that, was there a good reason for that? By the third day, bro, the depression starts to kick in. And I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Like, you have to, because I know this shit could change like this. Well, you so know? That, yeah. And then to use that same analogy, like, if you go to the gym every day, Right. There's always going to be the new trendy diet, the new trendy supplement, the new trendy, like we had that Ozempic, the thing. But if you go to the gym every day, all that stuff could change, but you're still going to stay the same. You're mm -hmm. still going to get better or, you know, at least maintain because that is something that is always going to be consistent. It's always going to be there. It's the same thing. Giving back and providing service. We had a conversation about it, but it's like the, the tracks NYC guy. When he stands outside of New York and he's giving I love people that video. bars of silver and bars of gold. He's like, you want this <laughs> and piece of like, silver? And they're, and they're like, no, thank you. And he's or, like, or not even saying nothing. Just, walking just walk past away. Yeah. Shrug, like, yeah, they just walk. What past is this him. guy trying to trying to give me? Yeah. Because their vision is so close to opportunity. Like they're vi like, they're just like, they're like, they don't, they don't believe in their mind that someone can be on the street and give them value. Oh no, for sure. And then to that, to, you know, to like, uh, in, in Trax's eyes, it's like, I'm trying to give you value. If you don't take it, that's on I'll, you. That's on you. So, you know, his mood is like, and that, that's the thing. When you're trying to sell people something that you know is shit, you're going to be pissed off when people don't take it because you're oh, like, for fuck, sure. I need this money. And I've sold shit items, bro. I used yeah. to, I, I, I learned how to like <clears throat> be a, not a salesman. Cause I don't, I don't sell, but I learned the concept of selling. Cause I did, I had like a bunch of like kiosk jobs. Cause I was a videographer for like all my twenties that like when I would need a job, those kiosk jobs are like easy to get. So those were the things I would do. Cause it's just like in make a couple checks, yeah. upgrade my camera, go back out in the field for a couple months, years, whatever. And I'd be like, Oh, I'm kind of running low on cash. Let me, let me go find Let me go find another kiosk, yeah. you know, but like those were like really low quality items, products. Those are all stuff that you find on team and whatever that are like two, $3. And people are selling them on kiosks on the strip, 40, bucks and shit. 30, 40, 40 50 bucks, bucks yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? And I understood like, that's, I understood like how I did a lot of like input impulse selling. Like I would sell to people and make them buy on impulse. And when I started to do my own business, I realized that that's not the business model that I wanted. I didn't want people to buy off my impulse and then maybe they regret it later like i want people that are like confident in like purchasing a service or in uh consuming content or whatever i want them to like feel good about it not like checking their account after they spent some bread or whatever and i used to, like i said i used to do that because i was commission based so i would be like in there you know what i mean selling 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 and like i got so good that like i started to feel bad i'm like this person didn't need this product and i didn't, and I didn't feel good about it you know what I mean? Like I didn't feel I I used to like have to like go numb to it and be like, bro, you're set. You're making these commission checks so you can buy your camera so you can do the bigger goal. That's how I kept telling myself like it's it's cool, bro. Just make your bag real quick and then just get out. You know what I mean? But then when I like I said when I started doing my business stuff, yeah. I'm like I don't want to run my business like that. I want to just provide so much value that people are like proud to spend their money with me. You know what I mean? Not only that, but it makes it easier on you. Like the easiest way to sell is to just not have a shit product. Because then, like we said, 
if you're selling shit, you're going to hate it when someone says, I don't want it because like, yeah. why don't you want to fucking buy it? If you were selling gold, like, or giving away gold, basically, who cares? They don't take it. Somebody yeah. else is going to take somebody's it. Gonna, I'm not losing. Gonna take I'm actually it. losing giving it to you. For sure. Because you didn't see the value in exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's like the word. That's like the one thing I started changing a few years ago was like, I stopped working with people that didn't see the value in working with me. If I ever fell for a second, like I was having to prove myself. I, I stopped the conversation, especially with a lot of brand deals that um, I that, that they reach out to me. Um, they'll try to negotiate a price with me. And the second I start to feel like I'm trying to explain to them why it's worth X amount, bro, I stopped the conversation because it's like this is just bad news written all over. If you're trying to do a transaction with somebody who doesn't even see the value in the thing that they're buying. And I want to, I want to drip, uh, drive results. I want to make a difference. I want like the person I'm working with to see results. So that's just like, bro, you know, and at first it is hard to say no to brand deals. Cause you can start getting excited. You're like, oh, this brand wants to send me this, this brand wants to send me that. But you realize saying yes to all those things is just like bad, bad, bad news, bro. Like the only time I take free product is if it's a brand that I genuinely spend my money on and I've genuinely loved their products. If it's not that, then we're going to have to figure out, does your product even align with my audience to begin with? Like, can my audience actually benefit from me being like, hey, guys, there's this business out here? Because if not, that ruins my credibility. And you got all these creators saying yes to all these products. And then down the road, that product gets canceled because they said some racist shit. And guess what? You're there. You promoted their product six months ago. You're probably racist. Yeah. Cause you didn't, cause you didn't look at the, their brand morals and their value and their mission statement and try to go look at their Instagram and see like, oh, this looks like a shady company. All their comments are like, yo, you took, you scammed me, you scammed me, you scammed me. Yeah. You Not know? only that, but just like you said, since everything has a human factor, people understand that if someone's always trying to sell me something, I probably shouldn't be there. Right. If I, if I have, no matter where I work or where I walk or where I live, if I go there and someone's always trying to sell me something. At the end of the day, I'll be like, hey, bro, just get on, bro. I'm not buying shit. But that's what a lot of people do is they'll build their community and then they'll, like, basically scam them mm -hmm. into buying shit from them based on the credibility that they have. And then everybody gets fucked over and then the, the, the creator, whoever it is, ends up with the bag and they just run off. But to me, right, the, the more you try to get out of your audience, like, the least respect you're going to have. And like mm -hmm. you said, if I see somebody taking every single opportunity to get money... To me, I lose respect for you. Mm -hmm. Like, quite frankly, I'm just like, you're not a person that I would ever, I wouldn't want to be a part of your community. I wouldn't want to be friends with you. I would never want to yeah. like aspire to meet you or be like, damn, bro, it would be nice to have a conversation with you mm -hmm. one day. Because to me, it's like, well, you'll do anything for money. Yeah, yeah, if I just sure. have a big enough bag, I can make you do anything. No, yeah, that, that's why like, um, <clears throat> I don't ask anything for my community. The only thing that they can spend money on is like the heat transfer vinyl, but that's a product that's within my, for sure. it's within my tutorials. But the thing is, like, when you ask from your community, like, let's say, like, <clears throat> like you have to ask in a way where it's an offer. Like, you have to, like, let's say, like, I drop a product because I tell my community, like, hey, I have a, something big I want to do and your support is going to make it happen. Let's say I have my offer and I ask and they deliver and I make my channel bigger and I'm able to provide times 10 value. My community is going to feel so good. It has to be a win -win. about spending that money. They're yeah. going to be like, damn, he is now making videos 10 times a day and they're all bangers. And he has a team and he has uh, other people under his umbrella making their own shows within there that provide value. They're going to feel good about that. But like a lot of people, they just they're they're trying to get money from their community to pay for the lifestyle they want to live on the Internet. Yeah, that's why I like, bro, I live like I'm really easy to please. I, I don't need that much. I just need to have like my bills at least paid so i can focus on creativity and not paying my bills and as long as i can like buy some food that i want to eat that day i'm good for right now because i know that's just all i need to get to the next level once i get to the next level then i can start thinking about what i want but right now it's just about what i need you know for sure but humbling yourself is also a very big thing to go with that uh, i specifically made it a point we talked about it before uh, through text but Talking about like the state of Las Vegas creators and creatives mm -hmm. and people in that kind of space. 
first of all, I want to ask you, like, what's your opinion on it? Like, what's the state of Las Vegas creators and what are the biggest mistakes that they're making? So, like, do you mean, like, in the creative world or, like, in the business industry? Because business people are, these small businesses, yeah. like, realtors, lawyers, like, you name it. They're starting to turn into content creators. For sure. You know what I mean? I mean, cr creators. Creators? Creators, yeah. I feel like in Vegas... Um, it's just, and it sucks because I feel like it's something that's like in the air type of thing because it's like from the beginning of time, from what it's like, that you, you can never take it away from Vegas. The essence of Vegas is like showing out, being big, the next big thing, the most money, the most this, the most that. Like, that's why in the beginning when the mafia had all the money and they were building the casino, they were trying to outdo each other. Like they, they were like, oh, I'm going to make the biggest one. Oh, my, mine got this. Oh, mine got this. I got tigers in my shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that element is just always here. And I feel like it kind of cursed Vegas because everybody's so worried about trying to show their neighbor like, oh, I got the new rims or like, and I, and I mean rims in like a symbolic yeah, 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 metaphoric yeah, yeah. way where that's like applied to any way. I got anyway. the rolly, I got the chain, whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, if people can just start like kind of switching their mindset to like, yo, instead of trying to go to the same networking event every week and trying to show that that show this person i saw last week that i flexed up and i got something new this time just have that mentality with the world be like yo i'm trying to show uk my my stuff i'm trying to show africa my stuff i'm trying to show india my stuff and i'm naming places of like people who consume my content you, you know what indian, i mean indian followers? bro i get every type of dm bro Would every you ever do a, like a visit to india like to try the food and stuff <laughs> not to try the food no. <laughs> street food? Huh? Not the street food? Yeah, I mean shit, but this is a conversation for another day, but like man, the Indian slender is messed up right now, man. Like they do not deserve no, I mean, any uh, of that. They need some kind of creator to help their fucking they need PR. They've tried they need to PR. go over there and like have you seen that thing with Sam Pepper? They yeah, got yeah. Sam Come on, bro. milk and stuff. Like yeah. that sucks, bro. But that's like getting off topic. That's a whole nother like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what were you saying yeah so like it, i don't know the biggest thing i see is like i i i feel like we've had the conversation before i think we had it when uh surreal and noah were on the first time and we talked about why we've never had like a big rapper come out of vegas or why we've never had like a really big anything really come out of vegas even though we are a pretty populated city it is growing but we're right next to LA, you know we have people popping <clears throat> off in LA, Seattle, Miami, Houston, Dallas, New York. We don't really have that in Vegas and I always ask myself why and it feels like people don't really see an opportunity unless there's a paycheck attached to it. Mm -hmm. And to me that's the biggest mistake people are making is they're so afraid to say like yeah, I'm struggling right now. They're so afraid to say like yeah, I'm going to take this opportunity even though I'm not getting paid for it and like you're cutting so many opportunities off because people mm -hmm. have this entitlement that like, well, I'm not worth that. I'm dope and I know I'm dope. So you got to pay me what I'm worth. And it's like, bro, mm -hmm. I understand. Yes. Right. It sucks when you have to fucking grind and you get treated like shit and you don't get paid what you're worth. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like every single person who's successful in this world, unless they were born in a money at one point, had to eat shit at one point, had to do multiple stuff times. for free, if Mul not multiple times. Exactly. And people are too entitled to do that. Now they're mm -hmm. too entitled to say like, damn like there's this big opportunity it's i could meet the, a bunch of people but i ain't gonna get paid for it so i ain't going no, it there. comes from the misconception of the internet yeah. they're making it look like easy you're supposed to be one move yeah. if it's not one move away and it could be like this and have be a big reward i'm not taking it because it looks like everybody's making one move and making it happen so now everybody's like i'm not about to take 10 steps when everybody is he's taking one I'm not, why would I take 10? I'm going to take one, maybe less if I could. Yeah. I'll take half a step if I had given the opportunity. But the reality is, as soon as you look away, people are taking steps. But then they're standing still. They're like, no, I haven't taken a step yet. But watch, when you look at me, that's when I'm going to take a big step so that you can see that I did it in one step. Yeah, for but sure. But everybody's kind of working behind the scenes and don't want to show other people like, hey, bro, like, I'm out here struggling, bro. Like, this content shit ain't adding up. Like, I'm trying to fucking put this move together when if everybody was honest with each other, but we'd be able to help each other out. Yeah, Because I've sure. met so many people since we've been doing this, like you, for example, that have helped me out so much for nothing. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't paid you a dollar. I mean, we've I've been, been helping each other. We've been helping each other, but I'm just yeah. saying, like, I haven't paid you anything. Mm -hmm. I haven't, like, done anything, like, that I would say, like, for you, that's like, oh, yeah, at least it was it was even exchanged. Like, to me, it's like, we just linked up, and if you're like, hey, bro, you want to come to this? I'll be like, yeah, for sure. And it's not yeah. like, I'm like, hey, but how much are they paying? How much is this? How much is that? It's just, 
oh, like, there's a lot of game I can learn from you. You might know somebody else. We can network. You come over here. I go over there. And we both come up together. I mean, and- the reason why I've been trying to do that more yeah. is because I know for, and it's just knowing your value, right? Mm-hmm. I know walking into business and walking in any situation, I know I can provide dummy value. So because of that, I'm, like, trying to see who that can match with, who that can, like, link with and create something bigger and i know that both of us at the same time can really fucking make a bag make a bag with people that like i feel like if we just keep going around eventually we're gonna meet those dope business partners that we can link up and do some like crazy crazy stuff with but that comes with just being out and about and being uh of value you know what i'm For saying sure. making sure that like you have tools in your shed you know because i feel like when i was younger um i didn't have like that many skills and i was trying to like be in all the rooms and do this and do that but like i said i wasn't ready i i if i would have came across a situation which i i did i had a couple situations in like the videography world where like my belief was almost bigger than my actual skill and i was like doing projects that were like way out of like my skill level and i ended up biting myself in the ass but i had to learn like yo your skill level is higher than like your business management level but because my skill level in the video was so high, I was aligning myself with high level business positions. But when in business, I wasn't all the way there. You know what I mean? And now that I'm obviously older, like I've learned and now I can like maneuver a lot more properly, which is why I'm glad like that should happen now and not before, you know? For sure. Just to close that topic off, I have like this vision that I keep seeing like in my brain for some reason. But you know how like uh, features work like in the rap industry, like let's say like Drake and 21 are like cool. Like they won't really charge each other for a feature like Drake would if it was some nobody asking. Mm -hmm. But it's like the label's paying. My vision for Vegas is that all, my vision for Vegas is us as creators being honest with each other and just fucking with each other on such a level that it's like, oh, I need help with like printing. I need help with like graphic design. I need help with like videography. I need help with like a podcast setup us fucking with each other and being like all right yeah like come over here let's do it and it's not even on something like i'm gonna charge you this i'm gonna charge you that it's just mm-hmm. like who is this going out to because if we as a city fuck with each other bro and there's a company from la or a company from new york or a company like, if the money's coming from anywhere else we could all get a bag together like how many bags can we get from <clears throat> all these other cities states globally 90 percent of and my capitalized yeah like is ca- from non vegas bro yeah imagine if everybody was like that we'd be bringing money in here exactly but the only way to do that bro and it's going to be a long ass process it just continue to be an example and continue to not gatekeep because there's been people that have found a way here in vegas like found a way to make some money find a way to like you know pop out when they want to and um they want to be the only one that walks in the room like that whether it's the club which the event like everybody has that main character energy of like I want to be the one that walks in, they got the chain, they got the whatever, and everybody's like, oh, so-and-so walked in. And because of that is why the gatekeepers in Vegas are amongst us, because they don't want, like, two, three, four, five people walking into the same event, and everybody got a chain, everybody, you know, and they're scared. They don't want that. That's why it's like, we just have to continue to show them the benefit of what it is to not be that way. Because that's the one, not that I was like that, but I lean more towards, like, trying to get seen by everybody on the internet and that made like a world of a difference you know what i mean yeah, and it's just sure. about being that example and really showing them like and showing them in a sense where they're like peeking over the not like hey look at this hey look at this it's like yo we lit we lit and they're looking over the fence like damn that looks nice over there Facts. that's how it has to be it has to be like you know like damn that's they looking cool over there and and they're telling you how to do it you know, most people, it's not like, yeah, you can't sit with us. Yeah, facts. You can't sit with us. Yeah. You know? I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather us as a city just make a bag off of everywhere else and keep it here. And it's like, I'm making money, but it's not like I'm making money off of you, 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 and the people that I see every day. I'm making money off of motherfuckers throwing us money so we could all split it and grow, go up together. Not for sure. And it's just like, you know, it's just, it's going to take some time. Yeah. Because you got to take the bad habits out of people. And like I said, those bad habits are like <clears throat> within the fucking air of this place Facts. like you wake up and you people breathe it like man i'm about to hate on the next one <laughs> like i'm about to hate on him because you know like a lot of people bro they're like um <clears throat> they're insecure and a lot of men they can be insecure too and if an insecure person comes around somebody who knows and figures themselves and knows themselves and they're confident 
and that insecure person starts to question themselves instead of having accountability they're gonna be like fuck that dude for making me feel like that and insecure fuck, men you know? to me are worse than insecure women Cause like an insecure woman, what, what is she gonna? She's gonna you know cry why? by herself. You, you know why? Insecure dudes go crash out. No, you know why? With all these YNs outside. No, like, for sure. You can't be. You it's because like around. men are the ones that are supposed to be like taking care of like yeah. the household and this and that. And if like a lot, it, there's like if a man doesn't have his shit together, manhood is hurt. We've all been there where your manhood is hurt because you don't feel like you're delivering or yeah. you're doing these duties. So if you're already down and you got you see somebody like taking care of their family buying their homie this like oh so and so is going through this but he got it he could take care of that like, if you're Fuck if you can't dude. you if yeah. you you know like if you look at that situation and don't think to yourself like man that's lit bro like i'm trying to do that too like let me maybe uh, let me pay attention to the moves that are being made over there so i can you know inspire myself to make that same type of move instead people are just like you know they feel that like they feel that insecure feeling and they're like man fuck that person he ain't shit he probably did this he probably did that oh he he ain't got no bitches he ain't got like they're gonna find something to say and they're gonna Anything, be like oh he ain't yeah, this yeah. you know and it's like bro it's like such a bad habit Facts. like it's like people are shooting themselves in the foot bro 100%. like you know and it's just funny to me because like greedy people like by being greedy okay they're greedy because they want more but by being greedy they're keeping themselves away from getting more it's like this funny loop that they're in that they can't get out of. You know, if they can just switch their mindset to like, yo, if I just give, 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 give. If you can have that hope and that faith that like that shit will come back and return to you, it will. You give, 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 give. You're going to receive, 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 you know? And it's just like about like on some spiritual shit. It's about getting into the algorithm too. It's about being consistent with that frequency, consistent. And then it just gets greater, greater, greater. And you just align yourself. It's the same concept. You know Facts. what I mean? Facts. But to summarize all this, at one point in your life, you had straight Fs. And I'm proud of it, bro. I'm so... You did too, right? Yeah. Bro, I wish I could... I bet you I could download them somewhere. Bro, like I am... Oh, yeah, you should, I am make, you should make merch out of it. Bro, I am so Fs. proud. Report yeah. cards. And, I'm like, <clears throat> and don't get me wrong. Like, I, I say this to everybody. Like, I believe in education. But the school system is something different that I can't really get on board with. But I am 100% for education. So I don't want people thinking like, oh, he just telling kids drop out, do this. Like, no, like if you have something that you can grow because you're passionate about it, I'm for helping you build that skill and getting it so good that you are now an asset to the world and you can now help other people. You know what I mean? Because it's crazy, bro. Like, I don't know if you remember in school, like if you got to the end of an answer and it wasn't the way the teacher taught you, they'd be like, no, oh, you can't yeah, do it like that. Bro, but like, why? You know, like if it's how somebody got there, they're really like, no, no, you, you got to do it like this. You know, and like, how is it that there's like thousands of kids in a school and they all have the same curriculum? Like that's, bro. And you know what was crazy too? Whenever there was grading papers and shit, if you did it the same as your homie, they'd be like, ah, y'all copied F. Bro, it's like, what you want to know? That's what you showed me how to do is get to this the only one way bro, versus letting me be creative and figure out my own way to get there. I was so, like, not with doing schoolwork because I was always doing videos. I was always editing. I was always being creative. Like, I didn't have time to do homework. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, that wasn't in my agenda to do fucking homework. I would have my homies be like, bro, I finished our math homework. They would... Like, after school, we're playing. These motherfuckers would pull the paper out and be like, here, bro, copy my homework. You don't even got to do it. You just got to copy what I already did. I'd be like, nah. <laughs> Good. That's, that's too much work already. I got to grab a pen and I got to. That's how disassociated I was with school. The original YN. Bro. No, but it wasn't even like, it was just like. But I learned later on that, like, it's just the way my mind works. If I'm not passionate about it, you just don't do it. I just don't do it. And instead of trying to fight that feeling, as I got older, I just leaned into it more. I'm like, now I just focus in on the shit that I love and the shit that I'm good at. And I make that 100% of my world. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, now it's just only that. I don't focus on the stuff that I'm not good at, you know? I feel like you'd be a per good person to ask this to, but. <laughs> You know how there's a lot of people who say, like, I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. It's like, stupidest question. But, like, yeah. So, <laughs> if someone asks you and they're like, hey, I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what I'm passionate about. What would you say to them? Bro, that <clears throat> that question stems or 100% from not believing in yourself and believing that anything can be for you. Because everybody has an interest, bro. I don't care if it's, like, 
I don't care what it is. There's somebody making money in that. It's just that people don't believe that that could be for them. Whether it's like, man, you love eating. Guess what? There's people who review food. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter what it is. There's every single person has that one thing that they get up for in the morning. And I don't know what it could be. Anything It could be that song. It could be, you know, people like to dress themselves like, bro, in, in music, there's a million different professions in fashion. There's a million different professions. It's not just having a clothing brand. It's not just being a cut and sew. It's not just there, bro. There's like a hundred million thousand different ways to make money. It's just the people don't think that it's possible for them. And it's like this mental block that's been like built in within us that people don't even realize it's there. You know, like, you know how many times I've corrected people because they're like not believing in themselves in front of me. Like, Oh, I can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean? You can't do that. Like why? Like why you you're, you're walking around, you have legs, you have arms, you have a brain, you're thinking, you can see you're talking to me. I don't see a reason why you can't. And the reason why they can't is because they don't believe that they can't. Like, if you don't believe in it, bro, it ain't going to happen. And that's the hardest thing, bro. This world is so crazy right now that that belief level within people is like, psh, damn, you're not even there right now because there's so many things to be scared of. There's so many things to be scared of. Like, oh, I can't pay this this month. I can't do this. I got to worry about this. I, this person at work is pissing me off and I hate going into work. And like, it, it, I can understand why it could be hard but one thing i'm going to say <clears throat> is everybody has a responsibility to take care of themselves in this world like you have it doesn't matter how bad it sucks or whatever it is that you're going through or whatever the odds are stacked against you you can have the worst cards dealt to you and you still have that responsibility to figure it out it's your responsibility for yourself within yourself with this human experience that you're having nobody's gonna come save you it's nobody's job to come save you and it's just you know what i'm saying that's that's just like where it is you know and a lot of people they might take that offense to that but it like it is what it is it's true you know what i mean yeah yeah because that's something that i feel like a lot of people struggle with Be, yeah like you said it does make sense that they convince themselves that because i'm not good at the things that society tells me to be good at that's why i don't know what i want to do with my life which bro there's Bro, I forgot where I heard this. They were like, you know who the best basketball player, best baseball player, best whatever. You know who the best is? We'll never know. Because the person who's the best isn't working on their skill, isn't being consistent, and isn't trying to get to the next level. Hmm. We'll never know who that person is. The person like the LeBrons and the Kobe's and them, they're the most consistent. They wanted that. So they went for it. So they got it. There's somebody that might be more talented than them that's just in their basement in their mom's basement not doing anything because they don't have that mentality to get there because it's like have you ever seen in in football it happened earlier this week when motherfucker dropped the fucking ball before he went to the end zone yeah. like right before you've seen where that happens Just right it, yeah bro they did that because they are a bad player and i'm gonna explain why is because every part of winning is your responsibility and that's even not gloating not being full of yourself like all these things bro they all matter you would think that gloating or not gloating would not be something that football players should be practicing but it's like that even that you gotta be is what's in. the difference between yeah. what makes somebody great and not great you see boxers going at it the person who's gonna win is the one who did that one extra push-up that he didn't do when they were practicing or not just that like i don't know if you are that into boxing but the the Mayweather Victor Ortiz fight when the refs talking to him, splitting him up, and then the other guy has Victor Ortiz has his hands down. Mayweather just lunges and hits him, and then the other guy looks at the ref, and then Mayweather hits him again and like rocks him. Yeah. And it's like keep your hands up at all time. Like you got to be locked in from zero to a hundred percent. No, you have like, to. The whole process you got to be laser focused, like on it, because if you're not, that one slip up that costs you, and then it's but over. like when you're in the leagues like that. It's those little things that separate people. When mm. when when you're like a professional and you're in the regular uh, crowd, there's a, like a big scale of like what makes this person way better than this person. But when you're competing like at an all time level, it's those little little things of being you know of discipline. And somebody who wasn't full of themselves would not have dropped the ball that early. Yeah. So it's those things that is just what makes people 
like great and not great you know yeah. like i'm sure i don't know that's an interesting thing to think about like i wonder if the gap between like the best player in the nba and the worst player in the nba is like the same as the worst player in the nba and like one of us just because like no nah, be, somebody like, did elite, somebody elite? did that i don't know who who it is um but he's the worst ranked player in the nba you could look it up yeah and everybody always talks shit about him in the comments and the highlights or whatever so he got so tired well, just look it up or we'll look it up after this yeah, yeah. And you'll probably know who i'm talking about once i show you but he was like bro i'm so tired of everybody in the regular people telling me that i'm trash he's like bro just because i'm the worst player in the nba doesn't mean i won't come down there and school everybody so he did he no, started I'm, challenging his his yeah. the people talking shit i'm sure he up did but i'm dunking the ass yeah but i'm saying like as bad as that was i wonder if the gap between like lebron steph curry kd at like prime level is the same as to that guy like would they do that to that guy yeah. the same way he would do that to us like that's how different levels are and that's how all those little things stacked up like they've done everything the way it was supposed to be done like yeah i don't know that's that's a crazy thought but yeah like being elite like that takes everything like, not for discipline, sure bro. hard work talent skill like just everything um but yeah uh i guess i wanted to close off with you're wearing your own recipe rhinestone this pants. is actually like oh yeah, yeah yeah the pants are me yeah that's the, a golden the, uh, the, filoso right filoso uh and then the hat is uh play some play some jay austin and kyle uh good people i try to i try to only wear um like my homie stuff or stuff i've made nice. um i mean all obviously buy... those are the nike slash recipe collabs right <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> like obviously i'll wear like pieces here and there like especially jackets yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff but i really try to make sure i'm wearing my stuff especially i was thinking about it actually when we walked in and i saw you wearing that i'm like that's how it should be because like let's say for example what if we have a viral clip like what if one of these clips that you cut up it just goes viral and we were wearing our stuff versus if I was wearing like Chrome Hearts or Louis or like they don't give a shit about us. They I could send me we a could season the, to sis. We could put the homie on. Yeah, facts. Everybody like, yo, whose whose shirt is that? Whose exactly, hat is that? Exactly. Millions of views. You know what I mean? Versus like if we wore somebody else's shit. That's why I was like, man, that's dope. That's really how it should be because like you never know what's gonna happen when it's gonna happen. Like that's why I've been more like the more I get views on my content, the more I've been conscious about like what i'm putting in it like for example um i had a <clears throat> today i did a video with my homie tone where um i did a tutorial um for iphone uh, people like people who use iphone and need to create content last time i did a iphone tutorial i did like like almost a million views in total Damn. on that on that video so i was like let me recreate the same style of of a tutorial but like let me get my homie to be the subject wearing his brand Cause I'm like, man, that'd be lit if I can, you know, provide value, have it do really well. And then it's the homie, you know what I mean? Facts. So I've been really like trying to make sure I collaborate in the right way. Cause I want to use the attention that I'm getting and funnel it properly to like the people here in Vegas that deserve it. Cause there's mad people bro out here. I just want to like, it just took somebody to try to go build a, a community with people outside of Vegas that I could be like, yo, y'all rock with me, rock with him now rock with him and with everybody that i'm rocking with i'm building value with them too making content with them so that way the community sees like oh no th this is somebody that we should support too you know exactly what I mean? and that's like exactly what i meant when i said like we should all fuck with each other because now let's say one of those one of those videos does really well and it's happened to you before i don't know if you want to name drop the the company that asked you to collab on the video tutorials but let's say a different company mm. sees that video and they're like hey bro like we really like that like we'll throw you some more money and now it's like, oh shit, now I got money based on my homie, probably got views, he's getting sales. Now, if he gets opportunities, he's gonna be like, hey bro, I need someone to shoot it, like come work on mm -hmm. it with me, we'll split this other bag again. Yeah, yeah. You'll just flip it so many times over, as opposed to, like you said, wearing somebody that we that wouldn't fucking cross the street mm -hmm. to shake your hand. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're never gonna win there. But I specifically wanted to ask you about what your biggest piece of advice is for people who wanna start a clothing brand. Um pretty much um say no to instant gratification <laughs> that's my biggest one uh all the moves you make uh just think about like you making this move today and how it's going to affect you in a couple years and i know for the younger kids it's hard to do that uh because it was for me trying to look into the future because you have less time behind you to, to scale how time really works especially when you're like freshly 18 to 21 
you don't process time the same and five ten years from now seems like such like a a time away that you're not thinking about let me do something now that's gonna bless me when i'm like 10 years from now eight years from now whatever and um i did a lot of stuff that was like benefiting me in the moment and by the time i started to get older i had to like really look around and be like damn if i don't fix that right now i'm gonna continue the path of becoming an older man and having nothing to show for the how hard i'm working because everything i'm doing is like benefiting me right now and not doing anything that's gonna like benefit me in the future so that's really what i would say is just focus on that long-term like play and like if you can't don't feel bad because i know it is hard just at least try to like keep that in your mind of like you know even if you want to do bullshit half the day 70 80 percent of the day at least have part of your day being you know doing something that's going to help you in the future you know because like i said like it is hard and i don't want nobody thinking that something is wrong with them because they can't put their mindset there and nothing wrong with you it's just a really 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 hard thing to do and sometimes it just does develop over time and for me it did i wasn't one of the those younger kids that just thought especially the way i am now i wasn't like that when i was in my early 20s i tried to be but nowhere near you know i had to go through that like 21 to 30 to like really be like damn okay now i can process this differently you know so that that's really like my biggest advice because bro that time is going to come up on you it's going to pull up on you and it's going to pull up on you quick <laughs> and like it sounds cliche it sounds like something that an older person says but it's true you know <laughs> like i was a younger kid here and the older people were like bro time goes like this i'm like i just shut your old ass up and now i'm over here like, like damn you unk. now you on yeah this kid's game. <laughs> yeah yeah that's crazy but yeah man um that's really all the questions I had. I don't know if you had anything else. No, no, no. I think it was very insightful. Everything you kind of shared <laughs> on that part. So yeah, but let the people know where they can find you on social media. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, TikTok and YouTube. It's the recipe worldwide, and then on Instagram, it's the recipe HTV. Uh, but honestly, you could look on any algorithm. I'm gonna pop up. <laughs> like you're gonna see my face. Yeah. Boom, right there. I don't care what platform it is. You're gonna you're gonna see me up there. You know what I mean. So for sure, this is going out Monday. Uh, we're recording this on today's Wednesday. You should be at 100k by then. I and should be at 100k within if, the next. If not, go check and definitely hit that follow. Um, do you think I should do something? What do you mean? Like celebrate 100k for sure. It's like like what though? Because I don't want to like I don't know how big or how small. I don't want to overplay or underplay myself. Because <laughs> that's, that's like a, for me. That's my first three digit. Yeah, like three digit nuts. K. Nah, hundred K is crazy, <laughs> especially like not doing it off of just some viral gimmicky shit, but yeah. actually like organically building a community online. It was it was a lot of work. Yeah, it was brick by it was literally yeah. like exactly. brick 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 brick. So yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll see it. Y'all <laughs> y'all will see it on social media. But uh yeah, we appreciate you guys uh rocking with us, watching this new episode. Uh Benji, let them know where they can find your social yeah, media. Yeah, you should follow me on Instagram at Ocho Benji. Yeah, go ahead and follow my personal Instagram. It's going to be at AKBTG. Follow the podcast at ontherun.pod. Subscribe to the YouTube. We're doing really good on YouTube. Every month, we're getting a little bit better. We're a little closer to monetization. That means we're going to be able to collect, and everything we make is going to go right back into the content as it should be. We promise we're going to keep having good guests, good conversations, and good content, man. Thank y'all for rock with us. We'll see y'all next week for another episode. Peace. Peace.